So let's play a little game of predicting or estimating the most probable places to have the big one in 2023. By big one, uh, we should call anything greater than seven. And to start with that, let's get the data. We're going to do this according to some data and some analysis of that data. Right here, you're looking at the total events during this past year alone. This go from magnitude four to magnitude seven, eight. And it's very interesting because as all the data we have, we can see how the dynamic Earth works. We can see how the epicenters locations give us a great idea of plate tectonics and plate movement. As you remember, we have this situation from the geodynamics of the Earth. And uh, again, at this normal, we can see the big Pacific plate and its cold ring of fire around it, very active all the time. We have the uh, Eurasian and the Indian and all of the plates like the uh, Philippines, the mid-Atlantic regions also move and they are divergent. So this is the actual picture for the year. Now, like we said, we had a quiet past uh, month, month and a half, not much action except for California. So let's look at some of the data to make our predictions. Let's go to earthquakes uh, bigger than six during the same year, the past year, okay? And again, they're mostly around the rate of fire of the Pacific. So we're gonna take this into account. Remember, there are two different approaches to this. There is quiet areas. Those are areas that are active, but has not moved. And that implies that energy may be accumulated on those. Okay, so some of those areas may be the Aleutian uh, Island trend south of Alaska, according to this. We have the well-known San Andreas Fault area, quiet. Chile has been quiet for quite a long time. And then there are the areas that are very active and releasing a lot of energy all the time. And there we have Japan, Indonesia, Philippines, the Fuji, Tonga area. So those are the areas that are most propend to produce the big one for 2023. Okay, so let's look at some more data to go with that. This is the activity for the past 10 years. This map shows the activity for the past 10 years of earthquake seven or greater. And that's what I wanted to show you what the most probable areas to produce and have enough energy to produce a magnitude seven or greater are located, okay? Now, this is the activity of the last three months, four to six. So these are intermediate earthquakes, areas that are moving quite a lot. And combining this information with the past 10 year information about big ones, we're gonna try to make some estimates, okay? So we're gonna give him some numbers. Actually, I will start with the area of Puerto Rico. 
as number 10 maybe moves he has been moving lately so it's a possible area of a bigger displacement that will be number nine we can go to the greece turkey area to put the eighth option iran near afghanistan that's an area that is also moving in the past days so it can be accumulating energy china and the indian euro asian plate boundary may then we have to come <clears throat> to the san andreas mendocino fall area as a whole area for a big one to happen and from then we'll jump to South Alaska and the Aleutian Arc usually produces a big one once in a while. It's always the Chilean Peru plate boundaries between the Pacific and the South American plates, very active. Sometimes they are deep, but when the plates move shallower in the shallow part it produces very dangerous uh, earthquakes. From then, we'll have to come to Japan, possible area, very active, have given you, have given us uh, some of the worst uh, earthquake activity in the past years. The Philippines, Indonesia, will be number two. It always gives us a very bad news earthquake, usually accompanied by some tsunami problems. And the first one, even though it's not that important from the point of view of human disaster possibility, is the area that's been moving quite a lot lately. And that is the area of around Fiji and Tonga. So those will be my predictions, if you want to call it that way. Remember, we cannot predict earthquakes. Scientifically, it's impossible to put all the variables that it takes. Mother Earth will give us a big one somewhere in the middle of nowhere with no warnings. So here what I'm doing is putting some of the past data and recent data of earthquake movement to try to make a picture of the most probable areas that can bring us the big earthquake for 2023. With that, I'm waiting for your comments. Saludos por el mundo.